Hi, welcome back. This video is on simple meter. So before we start, I want to define a few terms for you that we will use when we're talking about meter. Um, first of all, just to remind you, rhythm and meter are both, uh, both have to do with each other, but they're not the same thing. So the video on rhythm that you watched talks about different durations of notes, but it doesn't talk about how they're organized in a piece of music. Meter has very little to do with duration of notes, but it has everything to do with how those durations are organized. So when you see a piece of music, you will see both rhythm and meter, and they're related to each other. They kind of help each other out, but they're not the same thing. So just to make sure you keep those things straight. So um, before we go into defining meter, I want to define something even a little bit more basic than that, which is pulse. Um, if you think about pulse like the pulse in your body if you like if I were to take my pulse I feel a constant I feel something that's consistent right so um, my heart pumps relatively regularly right it's not um, unless I'm running or something and then it beats faster but usually my heart will beat at the same rate so um, that's what a pulse is a pulse is um, in music we use a term pulse and that means that there's something regular that happens consistently and it's um, every time the pulse happens it happens at the same rate so um, you don't necessarily always hear the pulse literally in a piece of music if you for example had a string of quarter notes then that means that each note is of the same duration that would be like hearing the pulse but sometimes you don't actually have quarter notes all in a row. You might have some quarter notes, some eighth notes, some sixteenth notes, some half notes, and those could be all mixed up in different ways, and that's what rhythm is. So the rhythm doesn't necessarily have to cause you to hear the pulse literally in music, but it's always something consistent that is um, there conceptually. So if you tap your foot along with a piece of music you're tapping a regular pulse and that is something that is true of most music has uh, that regular pulse in that and all of the music that we're talking about this semester will have the pulse behind it that consistency so um, whenever you have pulse is a very general term okay just means that consistent regular event um, but whenever you have pulse organized in a piece of music we call it the beat and the beat is a little more specific than pulse it's specifically referring to what happens in the music that you're listening to so um, you know if someone says oh let's clap along with the beat or whatever you're clapping that consistency that happens in that specific piece of music they're really very similar the terms pulse and beat um, so it's important to know sort of the difference between them but but a lot of people will talk about them interchangeably and usually we are talking about specific pieces of music so we will use the term beat more often than we use the term pulse um, sometimes people use beat kind of more um, generally especially people who are just talking about um, music for fun maybe people that aren't musicians um, will a lot of times just talk about like oh that song has a really cool beat to it they don't necessarily mean the regular pulse and that music is awesome because that happens in most music like I said but they're they mean like they can hear the beat maybe like in the drums or a bass guitar or something like that so a lot of times um, in more popular music or in rock music you'll hear um, the beat is actually played by an instrument and that comes out really strongly so sometimes when people say I really like the beat or the beat is really cool that's kind of what they're talking about so it is related um, so just so that you know that's kind of what we talk about when we talk about beat so when I listen to music I tend to feel the beat that's kind of like a thing we say um, like I will maybe tap my foot or kind of like go back and forth I'm not going to dancing but if you dance that's also has to do with the beat right so you you don't dance like against the beat it wouldn't it would feel weird to do that so a lot of times um, beat in music is something that we hear but also something that we kind of feel and that can help you when you're thinking about music like to kind of move along with the music helps you kind of feel where that beat is again you might not actually hear the beat literally in the music some music doesn't 
um, play notes on the beat all the time, but it's still a way that the music is organized. So if we think about beat, we could just have a, just beats in music, and that could just be all that happens. But the problem is, depending on how long the piece of music is, that would just they would just kind of always they would all be the same, right? So we like to group beats into what we call measures. Measures are um, always consistent as well. So if I have a measure in music that has four beats in it, then that means all of the measures, or at least most of the measures in my piece, are going to have four beats. So there's also that consistency. And whenever we start grouping beats together in an organized way, we call that meter. So the, the actual definition of meter is uh, the division of the musical pulse into a recurring pattern of strong and weak pulses. So this means that um, not only do we group them together, but some beats are going to sound stronger than other beats. And we'll talk a little bit in a second about how that works. Um, the most common metrical patterns are duple, triple, and quadruple. All that means is when you divide your beats into measures, how many beats are going to be in your measure. So we usually have either duple meter, which has two beats per measure, or triple meter, which has three beats per measure, or quadruple meter, which has four beats per measure. Those are the most common ones that you'll see, and probably the only ones that we'll be working with this semester. It is possible to have more than that, um, but usually we just stick with either two, three, or four beats in a measure. Okay, so um, there are differences in the way that strong and weak beats happen and um, in these different types. So I will show you how that works. Okay, so looking at this, these are how the different um, types of meters are represented here. So in a duple meter, two beats per measure, these lines that I've drawn here, these are called bar lines or sometimes called measure lines. Um, so here, we have two beats represented in each measure. So the first beat is strong and the second beat is weak. So it goes something like this. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. You'll notice that my pulse, my beat, is always consistent. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But I have grouped them into groups of two and the first one is always stronger than the second one. In triple meter, it's a similar thing, except we have three beats per measure. One, two, three. One, two, three. Strong, weak, weak. Strong, weak, weak. Strong, weak, weak. Like that. Quadruple meter has four beats per measure, so even more. This one is a little bit more um, nuanced. So the first beat of every measure is strong, and the third beat of every measure is weak, but a little bit stronger than the other weak ones. So it goes kind of like this. Strong, weak, weak, weak. Strong, weak, weak, weak. Strong, weak, weak, weak. So this is weaker than strong, but it's stronger than the other weaks, if that makes sense. Okay. So uh, duple and quadruple are very similar to each other, but in duple, every other beat is always the same strong Whereas here in quadruple, even though this one's kind of strong, it's not as strong. So it's a, it's a little bit of a slight difference. Sometimes in music it's hard to tell without looking at the music which one you have. But often you can tell because of um, how strong the strong beats are. And other things that happen in the music sometimes give you clues as well. And we'll continue to talk about that as we go. So for now, it's good to uh, take, a, take a look at this and get this idea kind of in your head. Um, one thing you might notice is that the strong beats are always happening at the beginning of the measure. Um, this is generally how music goes. Um, sometimes you'll hear measures where some other parts of the measure sound stronger, but that's uh, done on purpose to create a certain effect because we're used to hearing strong beats on the first beat of every measure. This first beat of the measure actually has a special name. It's called a downbeat. So if I say something like, find the note that is on the downbeat, you'll look for the first beat of that measure. 
and that will be your strongest beat. Okay, so we talked about duple, simple, sorry, let me say that again. We talked about duple, triple, and quadruple meter, and that has to do with how many beats are in a measure. But what we didn't talk about yet is how to think about what happens within the beat. So there are two types of meter. Both of these meters can be duple, triple, or quadruple, but they have to do with how the music sounds a little bit different. One of these types of meters is simple meter, and the other type is compound meter. There will be another video about compound meter, but today we're just going to talk about simple meter. Okay, so simple meter means that each beat can be divided into two equal parts. So any of the rhythms that we looked at in the rhythm video, all of those rhythms divide equally into two. A half note divides equally into two quarter notes, a quarter note divides equally into two eighth notes, and so on. So any of these, if any of these note values is the unit of beat, then we have a simple meter. So if I have a rhythm that goes um, one and two and three and four and one, and two, and three, and four, and I had four beats in each measure that I was counting, and in between that I was dividing those beats equally into two parts with the and. So that's how this will work, okay? So I'm going to show you what some of these look like in notation. Simple meters always have um, time signatures. Actually, all meters have time signatures. A time signature is shown with two numbers, a top number and a bottom number. So if I um, write this, 2-4 is a meter. This is a time signature that shows us a type of meter. So what we're going to do is um, we can tell that this is a simple meter by looking at the time signature. Whenever you have 2, 3, or 4 as your top number, you have a simple meter. That's just a true statement. That's something that you can count on. So 2, 3, or 4 is the top number. You know you're going to get a simple meter. So here 2 is the top number. I know this is simple meter. Okay, what else does this tell me? Well, the top number in a simple meter always tells me how many beats, the number of beats in each measure, and the bottom number always tells me the unit of the beat. This one you can kind of think about like a fraction, because there's no like four note, that's not a thing, but a quarter note, so like one-fourth would be a quarter. So think about this as like the bottom part of a fraction. So in 2-4, I'm going to have two beats in my measure, and I'm going to use a quarter note to get the beat. That means two quarter notes in every measure. Now, it doesn't literally mean that I have to have two quarter notes as my rhythm. It just means that whatever rhythms I have in each measure have to add up to that duration. So I could have in 2-4, like this. This would work. Two quarter notes in each measure. That works. Or I could have other notes that add up to that duration. So I could maybe have something like this. That also works. This one because two eighth notes equal a quarter plus another quarter. And this one because two quarter notes equal a half note. So this is also taking up two quarter notes worth of space. And if I think about strong weak, every downbeat is going to sound a little bit stronger. I put a little dash here because this note isn't actually on a beat. This note falls in between the beat. If I were to perform this, so if I give myself, um, let's, I'll give myself two measures of 2-4 as a pulse before I actually start saying the meter. So 1, 2, 1, 2, ta, 
ta 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 and that would be this rhythm here two beats in every measure the quarter note gets the beat and each beat is divided equally into two parts if I have a triple meter I'm going to have three as my top number now what if I do something like this three eight this is still a simple meter because three is the top number and if we know if two three or four is the top number it's a simple meter so each beat is still divided into two equal parts and the top number tells me I'm going to have three beats in every measure and the bottom note tells me what my unit of beat is so here my unit of beat is an eighth note so I know that every measure is going to have the equivalent of three eighth notes worth of duration in it so I could do this if I use my if I have my stems going down it would look like this okay that's three eighth notes in a measure or I could have two sixteenth notes equal an eighth note and a quarter note would be two eighth notes I could even do something like this remember that this dot means I'm gonna add half the value of this quarter note so it's as if I had a quarter note and an eighth note and we know that a quarter note equals two eighth notes so it's as if I have three eighth notes worth of beat in that measure so if I were to perform this giving myself th uh, two measures of three beats before I start one two three one two three ta 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 like that okay one more if we have quadruple meter four is the top number and we could have something like this this shows us that we know it's a simple meter because four is the top number we know if two three or four is on the top it's simple meter so that means that each beat will be divided equally into two parts the top number tells us the number of beats in each measure we're going to have four beats in each measure that means this is a quadruple meter and the bottom number tells us the unit of the beat so each beat is going to be a half note in this case so I could have four half notes in each measure or the equivalent of that two whole notes would be the same as four half notes okay this looks like a really complicated measure over here but it's really not so bad if you think about it two quarter notes equals one half note so there's beat one half note equals beat two two eighth notes are a quarter note and this is a quarter note so it would be this much makes a half note for beat three and then this is beat four so you can break it down like that it's kind of like math a little bit so if I counted off two measures of four before I started performing this oh and remember our strong and weak beats here so we would have strong weak 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 a little less weak like this strong weak 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 like that okay so if I count off four, uh, two measures of four one two three four one two three four ta 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 this one sounds fast it sounds faster than it looks actually I think but that's because the meter is a certain way so because a half note gets the beat depending on how fast my tempo is these eighth notes might go by really fast let me do that again one two three four one two three four ta 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 like that okay good 
Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. Um, keep in mind a couple really important things that you should remember as you go on and learn about more stuff about meter. Um, that simple meter means every beat can be divided equally into two parts. Remember what triple, duple, and quadruple meters mean. It's how many beats are in a measure. That's different than how the beat itself is divided. So make sure you keep those things straight. And then make sure that you're really comfortable with how to figure out um, what your meter is by looking at the time signature. And of course, if you have any questions, you can email me or come by for office hours and just let me know and I'll be happy to clear it up. All right, have a great day.